Blessings in Jesus, friends, and welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book of First Enoch. I have placed a link in the description box below if you'd like to follow along with us. And today we are in chapter 92. So if you have that open, as well as your Bibles, let's begin in verse 1 of chapter 92. Now it says, the book written by Enoch. Enoch indeed wrote this complete doctrine of wisdom, which is praised of all men and a judge of all the earth, for all my children who shall dwell on the earth and for the future generations who shall observe uprightness and peace. Now, if you'll remember back in chapter one, Enoch said in verse two that he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angel showed me. And from them, I heard everything. And from them, I understood as I saw but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is to come. And that's what he tells us in chapter 92 here. He says, this is for future generations who shall observe uprightness and peace. Let not your spirit be troubled on account of the times. And that reminds me of what Jesus said in John 14, verse one. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. And he was following a statement about his return, his second coming. Enoch continues, For the holy and great one has appointed days for all things. Now in Acts chapter 17, verse 31, we are told, Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, and he's speaking of Jesus, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. So in Acts chapter 17, we are told that there are appointed times. And here in the book of Enoch, we're told that the holy and great one has appointed days for all things. Now, of course, in Romans 8, 28, we are told all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so that's even these last days that will be horrible and terrifying upon this earth, especially for those who consider themselves followers of Jesus. And yet all things have been appointed for a specific purpose. In verse three, Enoch continues, the righteous one shall arise from sleep. Now this word sleep indicates absence. The righteous one is absent. Jesus is absent from the earth today, but there is coming a day where he will arise he will come back. He will no longer be distant, but he will be present among us. And he will arise and walk in the paths of righteousness. And all his path and conversation shall be in eternal goodness and grace. He will be gracious to the righteous. And he will give the righteous eternal uprightness. And he will give him power so that he shall be endowed with goodness and righteousness he will no longer be plagued by the sin of the flesh. He will no longer be plagued by the lust of the flesh. Sin will no longer be present for men will be endowed. They will be covered with goodness and righteousness. And he shall walk in eternal light. Again, this is speaking of the righteous. We will always walk in the eternal light of the Lord Jesus himself. And sin shall perish in darkness forever and will no more be seen from that day forevermore. Chapter 93. And after that, Enoch both gave and began to recount from the books. And Enoch said concerning the children of righteousness and concerning the elect of the world and concerning the plant of uprightness, I will speak these things. Yea, I, Enoch, will declare them unto you, my sons, according to that which appeared to me in the heavenly vision and which I have known through the word of the holy angels. And I have learnt from the heavenly tablets. And Enoch began to recount from the books and said, I was born the seventh in the first week. In other words, I was born seventh in the line of Adam, while judgment and righteousness still endured. And after me, 
there shall arise in the second week great wickedness. This is the time before the flood. And deceit shall have sprung up. And in it there shall be the first end. That's speaking of the flood, the end of man. This will be the first end. And in it a man shall be saved. That would be Noah. And after it, the flood is ended, unrighteousness shall grow up. And a law shall be made for the sinners. This would speak of Moses' law, the Torah. And after that, in the third week, at its close, a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous judgment. Most likely this is speaking of Abraham, but many believe this is speaking of Moses. And in his posterity shall become the plant of righteousness forevermore. And after that, in the fourth week, at its close, visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen. And a law, or tablets, as Moses collected them, for all generations, and an enclosure shall be made for them. So it would appear that the enclosure would be either the tabernacle or the Ark of the Covenant that would contain the law of God. And after that, in the fifth week, at its close, the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever. This would most likely be Solomon's temple. And after that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded, and the hearts of all them shall godlessly forsake wisdom. And in it, a man shall ascend. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. The whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. This would be the scattering of the 12 tribes. And after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall be its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. And at its close shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plant of righteousness. This would be speaking of Jesus. To receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. For who is there of all the children of men that is able to hear the voice of the Holy One without being troubled? We see this time and again throughout the Bible. Every time someone heard the voice of the Lord, they fell in terror. Most of the time they fell as dead men upon their face. Enoch continues, who can think his thoughts? And who is there that can behold all the works of heaven? And how should there be one who could behold the heaven? And who is there that could understand the things of heaven and see a soul or a spirit and could tell thereof? Or ascend and see all their ends and think them or do like them? And who is there of all men that could know what is the breadth and length of the earth and to whom has been shown the measure of all of them? Or is there anyone who could discern the length of the heaven and how great is its height? In Revelation chapter 21, verse 16, we are told that the city lies four square. It's a square city. And the length is as large as the breadth. And John measured the city with the reed 12,000 furloughs. That would be 1,500 miles. And it says the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So the city of heaven is 1,500 miles square and 1,500 miles high. And Enoch tells us here, who is there that could discern the length of the heaven and how great is its height and upon what it is founded and how great is the number of the stars and where all the luminaries rest. Chapter 94, and now I say unto you, my sons, love righteousness and walk therein. For the paths of righteousness are worthy of acceptation, but the paths of unrighteousness shall suddenly be destroyed and vanish. And to certain men of a generation shall the paths of violence and of death be revealed, and they shall hold themselves afar from them, and shall not follow them. And now I say unto you the righteous, walk not in the paths of wickedness, nor in the paths of death. And draw not nigh to them, lest you be destroyed. But seek and choose for yourself righteousness and an elect life. Elect means chosen. So choose for yourself a life that has been chosen for you by your creator. And walk in the paths of peace. And then you will live and prosper. 
and hold fast my words in the thoughts of your hearts. Man, that is so important, brothers and sisters. Hold fast my words in the thoughts of your heart. Let that be the meditation of your heart. And suffer them not to be effaced from your hearts. Do not allow yourself to forget them. Bind them upon you and keep them in the forefront of your mind at all times. For I know that sinners will tempt men to evilly entreat wisdom. In other words, to forsake wisdom, to go along with the flow and the modern way of thinking in the world that they live in. But what do I want you to do? I want you to hold fast my words in the thoughts of your hearts and do not allow them to leave from your heart. For I know that sinners will tempt men to evilly entreat wisdom and that no place will be found for her. No manner of temptation may minish or diminish. Woe to those who build unrighteousness and oppression and lay deceit as a foundation. For they shall be suddenly overthrown and they shall have no peace. Woe to those who build their houses with sin. For from all their foundations shall they be overthrown and by the sword shall they fall. And those who acquire gold and silver in judgment suddenly shall perish. Woe to you, ye rich, for you have trusted in your riches, and from your riches shall you depart, because you have not remembered the Most High in the days of your riches. You have committed blasphemy and unrighteousness, and you have become ready for the day of slaughter, and the day of darkness, and the day of great judgment. This reminds me of what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, beginning at verse 24. He says, Woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you will hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. And that's what Enoch says here. He says, Woe to those who have built unrighteousness and oppression as their foundation, those who lay deceit as a foundation. Woe to those who build their houses with sin. Woe to those who are rich, for they have trusted in their riches, and from their riches shall you depart, because you have not remembered the Most High in the days of your riches. You've committed blasphemy and unrighteousness. You've become ready for the day of slaughter and the day of darkness and the day of great judgment. Thus, because of this, I speak and declare unto you, he who has created you will overthrow you. And for your fall, there shall be no compassion. And your creator will rejoice at your destruction. And your righteous ones in those days shall be a reproach to the sinners and the godless. What frightening words, friends. Your creator will rejoice at your destruction. That should be a warning to each of us, friends, as we seek to live for the Lord Jesus each and every day, that we would be very careful to contemplate what we think, what we say, what we talk about, how we act, because he is the judge of the whole earth, and as any good judge would do, he is taking an account, a record of the things done by men, and we will be held accountable for those things. Well, friends, we're going to end here today. I'm so grateful that you're with us. I truly trust and pray that your heart is being blessed and touched, that your life is being challenged to be a better follower of the Lord Jesus in all you do for and in his name. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.